Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl Butler, and you're listening to the Mighty Mommy's Quick and Dirty Tips podcast, which will help make your life as a parent a little bit easier and a lot more fun. Welcome. Today's episode is number 358, How to Make Sure Your Kids Don't Push Your Buttons, a topic most of us can always use a little refresher on. You're out in public and it happens. Your stomach gets tight and twists into a pretzel knot. Your cheeks get flushed and then turn flaming red. Your brow starts to sweat. Your temple throbs. And by the time you're clenching your fist, you realize it's happening all over again. Your loving child is once again pushing your buttons. Not again, you tell yourself. You thought you had everything under control. That awesome pep talk you recently gave yourself is still ringing fresh in your mind. But even so, your little darling has once again manipulated you. And now you're losing control and having a mini breakdown in front of your child. Kids push our buttons for various reasons. They might be trying to get back at us for something we did, such as telling them no, they couldn't go play at their friend's house because they didn't get their homework assignment done the day before. Or they could simply be trying to get our attention, and they know that they can surely do that if they pester us and get us all worked up. Kids are born button pushers. Even the most well-behaved kids have the ability to get their parents worked up, even the sweet and loving ones. When this happens, most of us tend to get to our breaking point and explode back at our kids. The other common result is we eventually just give in. They wear us down so much we just cave. While both of those might be the easier approach, in the long run, you will make life a lot better for your entire family if you don't give in and keep your composure. Mighty Mommy has been there done that with her own eight kids. So, here are seven tips to help keep your calm on and not fall into that same old button-pushing trap. Tip number one, know why your kids like to make you upset. It's totally natural when your loving cherubs want to make you upset. One tried and true reason is that by aggravating you, they feel like they have some control. Even if they are sent to their room or given a time out, the pleasure of seeing you lose it and fall apart is secretly gratifying to them. It might be back talk or constant complaining or eye-rolling, but Whatever the behavior, nearly every parent will occasionally lose their temper with their kids. I know I sure have. So it's important to remember that every parent or caregiver will have their buttons pushed on occasion, or even a lot. And sometimes it's just a habit that your child has formed, and truthfully, it's happened because we parents allow it to. Hey, we're all human, both parent and child. So don't feel isolated like it's only happening in your family because, you know what, it's not. It's completely normal. Tip number two, pre-plan your strategy. The best time to become equipped with the tools to dismantle your little button pusher is when everything is going well. While you are calm, think about rationally uh, what caused your child to go into button pushing mode to begin with. Figure out if there is a way for you to hand over some power to her or him which is usually offering her or him some choices so that they feel that they have some control. For example, when my daughter was in elementary school, she would always get off the bus and run into the house asking for playdates every single day. I had four other smaller children at the time, and at that time there was no way that I was going to run her around to play after school. It got to the point, though, that the minute I saw that big yellow bus pull into our neighborhood, I would practically hyperventilate. Once I finally realized the pattern and how I was being played each day, I came up with a new strategy. When she got off the bus, I had a couple of activity options for her to choose from. No, she didn't think this was great for the first couple of weeks. But once she realized I wasn't going to lose my cool and challenge her, she finally started accepting one of the options. Eventually, she got off that bus and didn't say boo about a play date. Tip number three, have a plan B. Even the best laid intentions go awry. Once you think about why your kids yank your chain and then pre-plan how you'll handle things while you're feeling calm and peaceful, you need to have a backup plan. Life's all about plan B, after all. And then you'll have to know how you're going to cope if your initial strategy doesn't pan out. This is really like playing devil's advocate. For instance, if you're going to talk to your child about something emotional like a curfew or taking away privileges for not doing homework, hey, be prepared for when that child does not react the way you want them to. 
Already know in your mind what you're going to say or do. There are two ways to go about this. One is to calmly say to your child, I have to talk to you about something important. Let's meet in the family room or the kitchen in 20 minutes. And I don't want this to turn into a fight. This gives your child the time to prepare for the discussion. Also during that time, you can decide what you're going to do if your child starts to argue. The most obvious thing is to tell your child, Hey, I don't want to be talked to this way. I don't like being treated like this. And then leave the room. When you walk away, you take your power with you. Parents who are mentally prepared for how they're going to act when your children react have a much greater chance of not losing their temper. Tip number four, learn how to self-soothe. One of the best tips I ever received was from our pediatrician. She was very matter-of-fact, and she said to me, Cheryl, when life's got you down, you have one person you can count on, and you know who that is? That's you. When you're talking about parents calming down, we're talking about self-soothing. In other words, they soothe themselves by managing their own thoughts, not by controlling the environment around them. So when your child is challenging your authority, what you're thinking will be critical to how you'll respond. So don't go off the deep end and think that your kid's behavior isn't fair. Instead, talk to yourself. I know my kid is pushing my buttons for the 100th time, but I am not alone. Lots of other parents have gone through this too. I can handle this. This is not a reflection of my parenting skills. If you're thinking, this behavior isn't fair, everybody thinks I'm a failed parent, other parents don't go through this, or are they repeating some other self-defeating self-talk like, things are sure to escalate. But when you're thinking, hey, I got this, I can handle this, this is a child misbehaving, not a reflection of my parenting skills. This too shall pass. I won't overreact. This is just childish behavior. How can I best handle this? What does this child need from me now? I used to have these conversations with myself out loud when necessary. And you know what? It always works. My best advice after going through these moments with eight kids is to remove yourself from the turmoil. Count to 10 and give yourself a pep talk. Whatever's going on, whatever your child is doing, losing your temper is just not going to help. It may feel good in the short term, but you feel powerful and then in the long run, the child has learned an ineffective lesson about managing anxiety or conflict. So don't do it. Tip number five. Give the child a chance to choose better behavior. If your child is having a meltdown and choosing poor behavior, don't judge in and point out what he or she is doing wrong. Instead, try to relate to what is going on. I see you're very upset that you can't play outside with your friends today. You do need to help me straighten out your bedroom. So once that's done, we can have a dish of ice cream and unwind for the evening. And then you can test your friends or hang out quietly with some TV. This will instantly give them feedback on the results that they get from positive behavior. Tip number six, consistency is key. If you give in once, you open the door for more. It's hard short term to stand your ground. But if you don't, you'll make it 10 times harder for yourself as the kids learn that if they persist, they're going to win in the end. So stand your ground and remain consistent no matter what. And tip number seven, make regular dates with your child. If you want to create some positive momentum with your child, try to set up regular dates with him or her. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Take the time to connect by setting aside an hour or so every few weeks just for you and your child. Go out for ice cream, a trip to the library, or just some one-on-one time at home where the two of you do nothing but spend time alone. You'll be amazed at how less often they go into button-pushing mode. How do you control your emotions when your kids push your buttons? Share your thoughts in the comment section at quickanddirtytips.com slash mighty-mommy or post your ideas on the Mighty Mommy Facebook page. And you can also email me at mommy at quickanddirtytips.com and visit my family-friendly boards at pinterest.com slash mightymommyqdt. Be sure to sign up for the upcoming Mighty Mommy newsletter chock full of practical advice to make your parenting life easier and more enjoyable. Thanks for listening. Until next time, happy parenting. 